once again Roger Mudfossil University and today we are going back to the basics now I've been sort of you know it's been years I've been doing this and I sort of figured everybody had understood the basics of mud fossils but you know everybody comes along at their own pace so let's go back to, to the beginning and discuss on how this happens because I know a lot of people know oh, how can things turn into stone when they're flesh so I'll explain that but before I start <laughs> I was sent this today uh, by one of my you know uh, mud fossil people and um, the question and whether or not this was um, something to do with cave art and, and what the you know what the whole story behind this is so I'm gonna try to explain this to you this is in um, it's where they, they're looking at the Neanderthals and they're thinking that they're very sophisticated cave artists which they they did fabulous work now what they're looking at here is this this is blood now of course this guy understood you know the blood uh, in mud fossils and he looked at it and he said very red and how could this be so I looked at it now and, and I can tell this is extremely um, I'm not certain of exactly the place in the body this is, but I can see all of the different the different biology that was here. It was some form of tendinous connective material. I'm sure that's what it was. Now, you can see it has a scaly effect to it now, like it's dried over and scabbed over. But when this work was done, my feeling was when these little red spots were done they came up and they just tap 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 put little holes and then the blood came right out of those holes that and look at you can see if you look carefully you'll see all these little holes you see the little holes there? little dots and I think that's what they did they just like almost like a tattoo and the blood ran out just the way it does in a tattoo only it has stained the surface and it's red blood it's arterial blood and so there's other areas where you have the dark black looking bloods and and that is what that's just what it is that's that's how mud fossils are and when they were originally drying out after the great flood they were literally moist and down in South America and so forth they were mining slabs of fresh meat and then they would stack them up on those walls like putty they would just sit together perfectly not a crack in them and and then as soon as they dried out they turned to stone that is the nature now I'm going to explain the process all right as I go into this I'm going to keep talking chemistry 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 because that in life your entire life is chemistry that's all you are is a, is a chemistry set and you process the stuff you take in and if you don't process it correctly you're sick and when you die the the, the minerals and the, the different molecules in your body will do one of two things. They will either stabilize and not explode and rot away and be eaten by bacteria or they will be rotted away and eaten by bacteria. So let's discuss what happens in mud fossils. Mud fossils are a product of a flood. All right, just remember that. But you, you soak them in, in wet fluid in a solution just like in the ocean for maybe years all right I'm talking about the great flood now that was 4300 years ago and and it's recorded everywhere so don't tell me there's no flood there was a flood and it was it, it happened about 4300 years ago and everything pretty much dropped and there was giants and there was all this stuff they talked about now when they when they drowned what happened to them is the volatile organic stuff which makes you explode literally your body explodes if you ever see those old battlefield pictures of, of, of um, civil war and of bloated bodies and all that that is what happens to your body the gases in your body have no way to to work themselves out into the environment and they it literally explode your body the cells explode and at that point the fluids and so forth are pushed out through the the areas in your body that are, are arterial areas because there's no there's no restriction on arteries so the pressure blows that fluids out of anywhere the arteries are closest to the surface and then in your orifices and your eyes and your nose and all of those things um, now when you are in a flood however different story you don't blow you don't explode those those volatile things, those explosive things, go into solution. 
That means that the water that you are in works its way through your body you and, and, and works into the system to take these things out of your system and go into solution in the waters. And they collect in the waters like a gigantic bathtub ring. And that's what happened. The earth had a bathtub ring at that point. And the, what will come out into the waters is clays and transition metals, including iridium. I have a story about this later, about the bathtub ring around the earth from the great flood. Now, so you're in the water, you're drowned, you're dead, your 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 fluids in your body no longer circulate. So at this point, the waters start to invade and to take out the stuff that's trying to get its way out of there. It's called carboxylation. We'll go into that in a minute. Now, so you're in the water, you're in the flood, you're dead. You end up getting waterlogged. Waterlogged means take all of the, the stuff that is going to explode out and leave the guy's ball of flesh left. It's, a, you know, the meat and the bones and the flesh and the skin and all that stuff stays. Now, eventually, the floodwaters go away. Now, two things can happen. You can be impacted in mud deeply or you can be completely out of the mud and just laying there. And that was the case. I have found in 90% of the rocks, which are all over the earth, were literally alive at one time. They're all pr pretty much body parts. Um, and they were preserved in this manner after the water ran off, they just simply dried out. That's the nature of a, of a mud fossil. Now, so if it was in the wet mud, deep in the wet mud, you get different kind of effects. You get this kind of stuff where it's brown and muddy and, and um, the, the ferrous oxides are showing up in here because it's been eroded away. That's a muscle bone. That's the muscle on the bone. That is the tendon that comes down and that's the tendon that runs over to your finger. That is the fabric of the muscle that surrounds the bone. This side was eroded away. And that was from a giant hand that I, and I have the other parts of the hand and so forth. But my point being is, it, it, there's a, a hundred thousand different ways the final product can come out. So we'll go over that. And it's a product of the transition metals. In, in certain waters, they will wash all that away and replace them with muds. In other areas, the transition metals will stabilize and you get fabulous colors. Uh, in on, in um, opals, they stabilize in blood. And blood is literally completely packed with transition metals. So they take on fabulous colors. Now, carboxylation, this is important to understand. Carboxylation works with transition metals. Carboxylation is a process where the, these metal complexes, they call them, and the transition metals, so they can, they can hold on to something very lightly and then let it go and then grab something else very lightly in a, in a minor little transition, it's called. And that happens because they, there's a little extra pH or a little less pH. And it goes from like 7.4 up around your heart and it goes down into 7.2 further down in your system where it releases the oxygen. And then it picks up carbon dioxide at the 7.2 level, goes back up to the heart and to where 7.4 is, releases the carbon dioxide, picks up the oxygen, and makes that circle. That's the transition. And you have almost 100 transition metals in you. And that is why you are healthy, is if all those are in there at the right places and at the right quantities, and they are grabbing a hold of a, a, a little glucose here and bring it down there and drop it off and pick up some uh, uric acid over here. They know what to do, but they have to be there. And the reason those transition metals in, are, are in your blood system is because of bacteria that's in your body, in your colon and in that area. It processes the things that you take in and collects the, the metals. And if those bacteria aren't there, they cannot create the chemistry to do the job to get those metals. That's what they're for in your body. You, and you kill them with antibiotics. So you have to keep these, these bacteria. And it's all, every bacteria has its own special job. One of them might do gold. One of them might do um, silver. Or the other one copper. Or the other one magnesium. You, and you need every one of them. 
And let them, they, they're not just floating around in you for no reason whatsoever. They are there to carry a specific molecule to do a specific job. And if they're not there, your fingernails might fall out because that certain bacteria is not alive to create the metal that goes down to bring the stuff that makes your fingernails work. And they're that specific. Another one will be for your hair, another for your skin, another for uh, oily pores, another one for saliva I mean it's that specific if you don't have that stuff you have people oh I got dry eyes well I got sore toes I got achy joints I got no fingernails I, you know my teeth are bad my eyes don't work good they, they, every one of them needs to have service and that service is just like oil in a car only you got a hundred different types of oil and if you don't have the right stuff in your body you're gonna be sick that's that case closed and I always go into this because that, you know, I mean, why not? <laughs> because all these rocks are, these rocks were healthy at one time because they were eaten from the ground. All right, now we eat from boxes of this and bags of that and fake this and that. And, and things you put in your body don't just go in there and say, well, I'm not supposed to be here. Let me just leave. No, they either break something in there or they, they attach to something they shouldn't be attached to. They're not just there benign. They don't go in and say, well, let me do a job preserving something in a box and then when it gets into your body it has no effect whatsoever it's insanity so we should start thinking a little more about the things we put in our body